in. Okay, so we are back. So uh, I want to take a look at this MAGS program. It's very simple, but very interesting program. So, so here we are providing input uh, to this program as a sequence of numbers. Like for example, let's say the first input pattern is something like uh, INP1 input pattern is so it starts with zero. So if it starts with zero on line 12, zero will be read into the variable n and we don't even enter the while loop. And then when you print the input, uh, the mags, then we print some number. So technically speaking, when the list is empty, we should be saying, you know what, the list is empty. So there is no mags in the list, but still we end up uh, printing something on line 19. So in that sense, the program is uh, a buggy program. It's a, it will not be a garbage value. It will be the value int underscore mean will be printed on the screen. On the contrary, if the input uh, pattern is something like this, 20 followed uh, by 20, let's say zero, then uh, so 20 will be read uh, into variable n at line 12. And then uh, so since 12 is not equal to zero on line 13, we enter the loop and 12 will be greater than the max. So max will be set to 12. And on line 17, we do a scan of and when we do a scan of on line 17, we get uh, n is equal to zero. And then we go back to line 13. And on line 13, uh, no, the condition turns out to be false. So we come out of the loop and uh, 20 will be printed on the screen. Let's say if the input is something like uh, INP3, 20, 30, 0, then what happens is in the first iteration of the loop, max will be 20. In the second iteration of the loop, the maximum will be improved from 20 to 30. In the third iteration, we come out of the loop. So the idea, there are two ideas that I want you to understand here. The first idea is uh, that uh, we are starting with an estimate of the mags and in every iteration of the loop, we would like to, as we see more input, we are improving our estimate of the max. That's number one. Number two is uh, the case where uh, the input, uh, this is the first case, where when we give zero, instead of saying that, uh, you know what, uh, there is no element in the series, so we, the maximum value is undefined, we should have printed that, but instead we are printing some garbage value. It's not garbage value, we print int underscore min, but for the purpose of the program, it's a garbage value, because int underscore min is a part of programming logic, it has got nothing to do with the end user. Usually when you write programs, uh, these border cases will cause you trouble. Border cases uh, uh, will cause you trouble. So you will be able to handle the rest of the cases where all your logic, uh, you know, you, you spend most of the time trying to handle the usual cases, but the border cases you don't pay sufficient attention and they will be a cause for problems. So this is one and I want you to introduce one nice way of entering input uh, to this program. Uh, so that is, uh, okay, so we are working on, uh, so GCC. gcc mags.c and uh, so here we can say 12, 20, 0 and the mags is 20 is printed. But when you are debugging your program, every time entering this input, all this is a pain. So what you can do instead is, uh, you know, like for example here, uh, you can write your input in a file So like for example, look at this file, testmax.txt. Uh, so 12, 13, 100, 0, this is the list of numbers. 
we are entering the input in this file and what we do is uh, we just say dot a dot out less than test max that is input is read from test underscore uh, max instead of reading input from the keyboard whatever that is present in the file test uh, max dot text will be given as input to the a dot out uh, program and when we do that you can see that uh, 100 is the maximum and uh, you can see the contents of the file test max is 1213 and 0. Are you all with me here that in this particular example, we are not reading input from the keyboard. In, instead, we are using the operating system's redirection operator less than and, uh, and the input is read from uh, the file testmax.txt. Excuse this me, sir. very important. Yeah. Excuse me, sir. Yeah. Sir, if we have a uh, if we have a for loop uh, with a scanner statement in between, it just scans. And hmm. so, will it will it input all four values in the first time, or every iteration it will input the next value? It's not like that. Whenever the scanner is hit, uh, it goes and look at the input stream and uh, whatever the next available value, it uh, the scanner picks up. Okay, sir. Uh, sir, yes. So, like you enter twelve thirteen hundred zero. Yeah. I mean, but from the terminal, not from the text file. Mm -hmm. So, will it work if you put twelve space thirteen? Yeah, so it doesn't press matter. Enter. Yeah, or, anything matter. Is this the way when you give input? No, this this perfectly works. So, so like for example, twelve thirteen hundred. They are on one line. Zero is on another line. So it still works. No, sir. When you enter this, uh, when you enter it like this in the terminal, not in the text file. Like if yeah, you're reading values. In the terminal also it works. Yeah. Yesterday we tried it out actually. 12, 13, 100, and then in the next line, 0. It works. So, sir, how, how does it know to enter the while loop unless you press and uh, unless you press enter? After you press enter, then that's what, uh, then the the whatever the thing that is present in the keyboard buffer, it will be supplied to scanf. So like in and lab four part one, there is this problem where you have to enter each of the those numbers separately. Separately. So I yes, have to sir. look at the problem. But uh, broadly speaking, what happens is still you press enter, uh, the, the even the scanf at line 12 will not be processed. After you press enter, what happens is uh, the scanf at line 12 will be processed and what the scanf at line 12 will do is it will read the first 12 and then uh, it will come out and then the control will enter the while loop and then the scanf at line 17 will consume 13 as the input and then we loop through and then again the scanf at line 13 again will consume 100 so on and so forth so okay. this is how it works Unless I see the problem in lab four, I will not be able to give an exact answer, but this is how this works. So am I audible? Yes. So uh, could we do it the other way around? Like test, uh, test max dot txt greater than sign than dot slash a dot out? No, no, no. No, that's not how it works. Okay. You cannot do that. There is a specific semantics for this. Uh, when we do this dot slash uh, a dot out less than test. Max, there is specific semantics for this. We cannot do it the other way. Uh, so, uh, what if we wanted to use negative integers? Won't no zero be inconvenient then? Yeah, sure, sure. Let's uh, go to test max. So, let's say minus 100. Shall we try? So max is 13 instead of uh, now with uh, minus 100, it's no longer the max. So 13 is the max, so 13 got printed. So, yeah. Um, just to confirm, <clears throat> we use int underscore max uh, to target that one exceptional case in which the user enters a number bigger than uh, the int underscore max. What is that? Can you repeat again? We use uh, we int underscore max is the corner case, right? Sorry, int underscore min is the corner case. Int underscore. Ah, okay. Okay. Is yeah. that the corner case? 
yeah it's a corner case because uh, that's uh, yeah because if the it it's not a what do i say it's uh, I don't think it's what in what do you mean by it's a corner case? If the user enters a number less than uh, int can handle. Yeah, the user cannot enter a number which is less than that. Okay. It wouldn't fit into the variable max or in any integer. So the program doesn't work. Okay. Thank you. Uh, sir? Yes. So if I just, uh, before the while loop start, if I just write max is equal to n, which means the first n that I've entered, if I don't want to use int underscore ah, min, okay. and then I start the loop again, wouldn't it have the same effect? Because the first- Yeah, so good, 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 good. Good, so that's a good idea. So, uh, so another idea that is being suggested is let's not use this, you know, so you remove this, and then whatever the number n that we read, then uh, we read first. I'm not sure, but uh, but in case if you say if you enter zero, then it will be treated as max. So I'm not. Sure. It still doesn't take care of the corner case when the list is empty. You can do this. You can say on line thirteen, you can say max is equal to n, and then you can say if uh, max is not equal to zero then that means the list is not uh, empty but on the contrary if this is the case we say printf the list is empty so now you can take care of the corner case uh, sir what if we write max is equal to n right before the f in the while loop right before the if in the while loop, so it will satisfy the not n not equal to zero condition as well because it's inside. No, but the, the problem loop. is after you come out of the while loop, you don't want to. If the list is empty, you want to say the list is empty, not print some garbage value. Uh, so, so uh, what do you mean by list is empty? I don't understand. When the input is uh, see what is the list? The list is uh, it's a sequence of numbers followed by zero. So. If you just enter zero, then that means the list is empty. The series is empty. Okay, if you enter zero, uh, like at the Zero beginning. is not part of the list. Zero is just a term. It just tells that the integer list is terminated. Okay, sir. So what if we had you can do it with the do while group, sir? Yeah. Okay, so anyways, I think, uh, I guess uh, you might be able to take care of that using a do while loop maybe. Um, so just check out this, but I want to highlight the problems uh, here. That's all. So yeah, so good, good. So I am. Uh, I appreciate there are nice inputs here. Uh, there are multiple ways in which we can take this problem. Uh, but what I want to, there are two ideas that I want you to appreciate here. That is uh, number one, the, in terms of computational thinking. Uh, so the logic that we are taking here is we are st starting with an estimate of the max and we are improving the that estimate as we iterate through the list. That is number one. Number two is uh, usually when we write programs, most of the time it works, but there will be some border cases. And uh, if you don't pay attention to these border cases, then we get into trouble. And from what I heard, so I always shouldn't be talking, this is too early to talk about it, is when you go for interviews, you know, like when they ask for problems, uh, programming problems for you to solve, one thing they see is how do you handle the border cases? Can we compile this code and see? And, uh, what is happening? So, GCC. Max dot C. So let's say if the if it is uh, an empty list, 
then we say the list is empty. This is the message that we get. Uh, sir, uh, I didn't understand what you mean by border cases. Border case is the case like where the list is empty or uh, things like that. So. Okay, so like what you did uh, by writing using the if and else statement to say the list is empty, that's a border case. Yeah, that's true. So the whole logic works. We have to use this if statement to handle the border case. That is, if the list is empty, in which case we don't want to print an arbitrary max. We want to say that the list is empty. So shouldn't we do this check and for the list is empty at the very start of the while, at before the while loop itself, actually, because what if we had entered negative numbers? Then the list wouldn't be empty. But if our last input was zero, then we would be printing the list is empty, but the list wasn't empty. No. I, what is your question? If you enter negative numbers, what happens? Yes, sir. We would, if we were to enter, say, 10 negative numbers and the last number being zero. Okay. Then, what, what happens then? Yes, sir. Then wouldn't it uh, be saying uh, that the list is empty? At, uh, no, no. Why is it? See what happens if we enter 10 negative numbers. Let, let's say, let's start with two negative numbers. So let's say minus 10, minus 20, and zero. So what happens? Minus 10 will be read on line 12. And uh, on line 13, we take the current estimate of max as minus 10. Line 14, we enter the while loop. So because n, the current value of n is minus 10. And uh, so we say if n is greater than max, max is equal to n. So it kind of goes through, it doesn't matter. And then after that on line 18, we read minus 20. Uh, and then you go back to the loop and we check again. Uh, so it's say the, the, the condition turns out to be true. You enter the while loop. You check if minus 20 is greater than max. It's not the case. So you come to line 18, you read zero. And then you go back to line 14 and if n is not equal to zero, that, con that condition turns out to be false. You come out of the while loop and you print uh, the mags as uh, minus 20, as minus 10. So isn't the max zero here? No, zero is not part of the input. So please understand this. That's what the enter, I think uh, you have to pay attention. So what are we saying? We are saying we want to enter a series of integers. And zero, you can clearly see zero to terminate. So if the list turns out
one more power cut back so today is not a okay let's continue good good it's okay i think we have to live with it some issues are there today it's okay we sh let's not get frustrated so there is this question i think uh, vivek is asking before uh, the power cut is uh, see in this uh, there is a third issue here which i kind of didn't highlight and that could be the cause uh, problem that is uh, no, causing concern is there is a limitation to this program that is uh, this program cannot handle uh, pro integer sequences which contain zero in it because zero is used to terminate that the sequence has uh, ended so if you are handling integer sequences which contain zero in them then we have to use a different mechanism to say that you uh, know that the sequence has uh, terminated that the, that the integer sequence has terminated all right are you with me vivek so does it answer your question or is it still bothering you yes sir uh, sir we could say take a character input for the yeah that is true you can kind of uh, have another kind of termination uh, uh value termination criteria so couple of students have asked or is it the character thing where i said press a to terminate and i said n is not equal to a but that didn't work sorry can you repeat again sir i uh, i try to use a character like uh, instead of saying uh, while n is not equal to 0 i tried n is not equal to a but then it says that you have to specify it as a variable so should i give if we give some like really specific value to a like 0.00003 or something nah, which it's, there are different ways to do it that's not the right way to do uh so one way of doing is uh, you can kind of give an end of file uh, thing or you can uh, kind of catch the return value of scanner and if the input is anything apart from the return value then uh, then the sequence will terminate so but like it's okay yeah like control d is uh, some kind of uh, so there are different ways to terminate we can take them up maybe in a later class so you can put, one thing sorry so you can put while scan of n right can you do yeah that? yeah so that is possible that is one way of doing it so so like so the another way of doing it is uh, we can say retval is equal to scan of and um, here retval is equal to scan of and while retval is uh, not equal to so ideally when scan of reads it reads one input so if it is equal to one i think this may work so remember scan of returns the number of values it has successfully read so since we are passing one argument if it reads one integer it should return one so let's see if this works i am not sure but let's see so you didn't define that well oh i didn't define that well so you can just put scan of in the while condition also right well it's also that while me do also possible but i may have to ch change the programming logic a bit so i am just trying to uh, okay so so why would you like just put the scan of from the while loop Sorry? inside why can't you just put the scan of that's inside the while loop right now yeah the... i think it's possible so i'm just uh, yeah that's also possible so we can just so what does that while do the while loop uh see there are different programming logics okay so let's uh, yeah so that's a valid thing to do i agree that's a valid thing to do we are stuck with the max problem today let's see so 12 13 14 now it will take zero also in order to terminate if i press control d uh then it's an end of file character i guess and then what happens is uh, the whole list is uh, sir what is ret while doing can so you so well, like so let me do one thing so let me do few things sir yeah but, uh, when will the uh, value of ret while be anything other than one 
if you if you if scan of is not a, remember scan of is trying to read an integer so if scan of hits anything which uh, it cannot consume and process it as a as an integer scan of returns an error uh, saying uh, minus 1 or something like that uh, then uh, yeah so in which case the scan of returns a minus 1 saying it's an error so can you give some example uh, which scan of can't process which scan of can't process like can you give an example of an input which scan of can't process so, so that we we'll get minus simple, one. No? so if you compile this dot a dot out if you just press a so a is a scan of cannot process uh, a so the return value here will on line 11 will be minus 1 and uh, we don't even enter the loop 13 we come out of this loop and we are printing the value of max and max is a garbage value and that's what we are printing on this okay sir i think we just took several turns in today's lecture uh, i just want to check are you all how many of you are with me how many of you are lost in this sir, process i just have a doubt in the red val part what does red val equal to equal to 1 mean sorry sir can, can you explain this red val part again just give me 1 minute don't know this my AC is making noise. Can you speak a bit louder if you don't mind? So can you please explain this ret val part again? What does ret val is equal to is equal to zero uh, is equal to is equal to one mean? So who is asking this question, man? No? Sir Anirudh Kaushik. Anirudh Kaushik. Okay. See, Anirudh, we discussed about this while discussing scanf. So, so what scanf does? Uh, but anyway, I'll repeat again. So here on line 11, if you see, there is a scanf statement. And what scanf does is it keeps searching in the keyboard buffer for an integer uh, by ignoring the white spaces. White spaces include tab or space or backslash n, that is new line character. All those will be ignored and it keeps searching for a integer. So if it hits a number like one, two followed by two, it consumes it as number 12 and stores it in uh, variable n. Okay. But on the contrary, let's say if I, if the character that is while searching for the, on the keyboard buffer, let's say if it hits the character A, then scanf uh, cannot process character A uh, because uh, right now it is looking for an integer. So it returns an error, it returns minus one. Uh, as the written value. But whereas in the first case, it returns one, which is the number of arguments it is able to successfully read. So in case one, in this case, it returns one. In case two, it, uh, there is a problem there. So it returns minus one. Okay, sir. Thank you, sir. Sir, could you run the program once again? Yeah, I'll run the program. So, uh, so and then what happens is in case two, what is happening is you don't even enter the while loop because the return value is not equal to one. So you come out of the while loop and on line 19, so max takes some garbage value because it is not initialized. So what happens is you say if max is not equal to zero, it's not equal to zero because max is taking some garbage value. So it is printing zero on this. So if you just press enter only, if you just press A only. But on the contrary, if you, have something if the input is something like uh, no, 12 space, this is space followed by let's say A, then the first scan of will go through successfully and then uh, the estimate of max will become equal to two, but the second scan of will hit an A uh, and what happens is uh, it uh, we come, scan of will not be able to consume A because it is looking for an integer so we come out of the while loop and we go to statement uh, 19. And, uh, but the current estimate of max is 12 and 12 gets printed on this. Are you all with me here? I'll run the program, but uh, logically speaking, are you all with me here? Excuse me, sir. Yeah. Sir, I was uh, uh, executing a loop and it, so basically after every five digits, uh, there, I had to print something. After every? 
like uh, after every five iterations of the loop, I had huh. to print something, right? After every five iterations of the loop. Yeah, there, there was this uh, problem in the uh, homework. So it said you have to you have to take the integers five at a time. So after five at five, a time. Which problem? The, it was it was the UPS problem. There was. Are see please uh, see I please try to ask questions that are here and if you have any questions uh, you should be asking TS you know, because uh, we have so to I take a detour on it and try to understand what that problem is and uh, you can uh, take the help of TS and try to get them answered. No sir I just wanted to ask like how the keyboard buffer and scanf works in the loop because I think because my loop was not uh, functioning properly with the scanf. So so maybe I will uh, take this question at the end of this class. Gaurav, is it all right? Okay, sir. Which lab was this in? Sorry? So, so this UPS.C problem. Can you speak a bit aloud? So this, uh, the UPS problem which he's talking about, okay. I just wanted to ask, is it in lab 4 or was it in one of the previous labs? Because Lab 2, part 2, questions 5 and 6. You didn't have to use a loop in lab 2. Please be considerate, guys. You are, uh, if you just take a different, uh, we cannot progress in this uh, lecture. So, ask questions that are relevant uh, here. I, I do understand those questions you are asking are also relevant. Uh, but if it requires a complete detour, then, uh, then the class will go in different directions. We don't go anywhere. And uh, between uh, TA hours, no one is attending the TA hours. So please use uh, help, take, take the help of uh, TS. All right then, so let's run this program. GCC max.c. So 12, 13. Minus one forty two, and finally at the end I am pressing Control D, which you cannot see on the screen. Control D is end of file character, and uh, thirty two is getting printed. So this is a clean way of doing. It. And there are many suggestions to improve the code. Uh, uh, so, like for example, using scan of within the while statement, which is perfect to thing to do, uh, but uh, we are not, uh, but yeah, I want you to take this code and improve upon it. All right, so now let's go to the next uh, program, Sir? sum dot c. Sir, hello. So if you mm -hmm. have any questions, please uh, raise. Can you please wait or raise your hand, please? Sorry, sir. Sorry, sir. So anyway, who is this? You can ask the question. Uh, Sushil sir, uh, like so when we uh, end the file, like when we put control Z, it uh, the scan of uh, um, the return value of uh, control uh, control Z is not one, so it ends the loop ends. Return value of uh... like when we scan uh, control Z, the return value of that uh, scan of will not be one, right, sir? It's not one because it's not like return value. What scan of returns is number of values. It is able to successfully read. So in, in statement 40, for example, here scan of can return either one because there is only one person D or minus one, in which case it's not able to return even one integer, it returns minus one. Okay, sir. Are you with me there? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, so now this is a sum program is another program. So in the sum program again, we are, uh, so here we don't uh, face that uh, boundary condition. So here what we can do is, uh, you know, while uh, maybe we can try to do this while uh, scan if this is what is being suggested. Uh, 
so we are changing this sum program while scan of p is not equal to minus 1 so this program works nicely are you all with me on this program the sum.c program so again scan of what scan of does is it tries to read an integer from the keyboard buffer and if it is not able to read an integer from the keyboard buffer it returns an error it returns minus one and oh, okay so i need to remove this uh, on line 14 and uh, so and then uh, so finally we compute the sum we will come out of this program gcc sum dot c so let me do one thing Oh, maybe yes, she is saying, uh, did I get the semantics of scanf wrong? It, it, will it be, if it does it return zero if scanf is not able to read uh, anything? Uh, yeah, I think this is a better condition. I agree with Lakshmanan because otherwise we have to rely on what uh, scanf. Yeah. So when we do this uh, thing, so if scanf successfully reads, it returns one. So this seems to be a better thing to do. Thanks, Lakshmanan. It, it's good logic here. And uh, GCC sum dot C. And I also want to eliminate line nine because uh, Sum is, uh, hey, did I get the sum wrong? Oh, it's not right on. Yeah. Are you with me on this program? And one thing again, I want you to uh, uh, appreciate here is test max. So now we can uh, uh, input here less than test max. Test max has some series of uh, inputs. So when we add them up, uh, 12 plus 13 is 25, 25 plus minus 100 is minus 75, minus 75 plus zero is uh, minus 75. That's what gets printed on the screen. I see a couple of hands are raised. Say, so can you, you can unmute yourselves and ask the question. So uh, I tried uh, doing, inputting a character through scanners now, and it returns, uh, zero not minus one yeah it returns zero possibly because uh, i could be wrong because it returns the number of values it successfully read so it re it didn't uh, read any any not even a single value successfully so it returns uh, zero does it make sense yes sir it makes sense thank you like for example if scanf i think we discussed with this couple of or not few classes before so if there are two percentages percent d percent d and uh, both are integers that we are trying to read and if the input stream is something like uh, in the keyboard buffer uh, if it contains uh, something like this so you have 12 space a then uh, the first 12 will be matched to N1, it will be read to N1. And the second A, it cannot be consumed by scanf because it is looking for an integer. In this case, scanf returns one because it is able to read only one. But on the contrary, uh, if it is just uh, A, then to even to start with, then it returns a zero uh, because it's not even able to con extract even one integer from the keyboard. So can you tell us more about how using other characters other than placeholders in the scanner forces certain characters to be inputted and what happens if that character is not inputted? Read about scanf, no, it's all very detailed. It is explained in the textbook and uh, 
So when depending upon the format specified here, scanf looks for a particular uh, input uh, stream, uh, input in the keyboard. And uh, if that is not, if it's not able to get it, then uh, it will stop reading at that point in time. And then it returns back saying how many values it is able to read successfully. So you, even in the textbook also, the description for scanf is written fantastically well. So please try to read uh, the textbook, okay? Because it cannot be a very exhaustive thing. I'm just giving you the basic idea. And if you want to get a more grounded uh, idea, then you should read the textbook. Time now is 11.30. Since we lost a lot of time, is it all right if I take, let's say, half an hour more because I want to show arrays and few interesting programs? Okay, thank you guys. So someone wants to me to execute the program again. So just uh, All right, yeah. So, executed the program. So, what is it that you would like to test? Who asked for it? So, can they? Minus 12, 13, 14, control D, 27. Okay, so let's uh, get going. Uh, let me, but I want you to pay attention to this code example because we use it scan of nicely in uh, the while statement condition. So this is a nice code example to keep in mind. So test max. Let it go. Yeah. So this is a program to uh, where we want to just compute the sum of positive numbers in the series. So what are we doing here? So again, guys, so please, uh, uh, zero is excluded from this input list. Let's not uh, change this program and worry about uh, those things. Or maybe we can, in order to make you, I can make you happy by saying this is control X. is equal to one. So yeah, this is, uh, and then so what we are doing is if input is less than uh, zero, then what we do is we, we don't want to add it to our list. So the purpose of this program is for, to introduce this continuous statement on line 12. So if the input is, let's say, if the input is, uh, and I also I have to remove, state this also I have to remove. So this is a much cleaner program. So you can see, thanks to all of you, so you forced me to rewrite the code I have uh, done I have before. So yeah, so here, Let's say this is the input. So input is, let's say, 32 minus 12, 4. So initially, 32 gets read on line 9, and uh, we enter the code. And on line 11, we are checking if input is less than 0. It's not the case. So what happens is you go to line 14, and we are accumulating input into the variable sum. And when we come back, so minus 12 will be red and minus 12 is uh, less than zero. So we have this continuous statement. So what, what this is important, so those of you who are seeing it for the first time, so what this continue will do is, it will find out the enclosing while loop for this continue. So for this continuous statement, the closest enclosing while loop for this continuous statement is the state is the while loop at uh, from starting at line nine and ending at line fifteen. 
So the control will from here, it will directly go to the end of the loop and from here, it go here. So this is the purpose of the, uh, uh, the continue statement. So if the continue statement, when the program hits the continue statement, it finds the closest enclosing while loop and control will go to the end of the while loop and go back to the beginning of the while loop. This is what it will happen. Or put it in another way, I think Prachaksh uh, nicely put has put it better than me. It skips the current iteration of the loop and it goes back to the to the next goes to the next iteration. It it does it for any loop, just not for while loop. It uh, does it for uh, no do while loop also. I guess do while uh, for loop also the same thing uh, applies. There are two raised hands, so you can unmute yourself and ask the question. Sir, could you explain continue statement one more time? I didn't quite get it. Yeah, so when you hit the continue statement, uh, let's say if continue statement is not there, then after the if part of the statement is executed, you go to line 14, right? But on the contrary, if continue is there, whatever the statements that are present uh, after that in the loop, they will not be executed. The current iteration of the loop will be skipped and the next iteration will start. That is control will go back to the end of the loop, line 15, and it goes to line 9. Again. So, so what's the significance of the continue statement here? Because if you take the continue statement and input is less than zero, it will just directly skip that. So we're not so supposed we don't to take... want to add, we want to write a program to add uh, uh, only positive numbers in the list. That's our goal. Okay. So and that's why you, commentary. that's why if it takes a negative input, it will skip that. Yeah, that's true. If it's a negative input, it will skip. So that, that's the logic here. Okay, sir. All right, so let's uh, compile this uh, code. GCC, uh, what is this? Some positive, that is we want to find sum of positive numbers, dot slash a dot out. So let's say to 27 minus 27, 23, control D. So 27 and 23 gets summed up. So it is 50. So the so the, when there is that when input is less than zero, it's not accumulated in sum. And the way we are doing it is by making use of the continuous state. Are you all with me on this program? Can I see? Shall we keep going then? Great. So let's see one more thing I want to say. Let's say we don't want uh, negative numbers at all. Okay, if there is a negative number, then uh, we want to uh, complain. Hey, I, I have seen a negative number and this is not acceptable. So this is what we do. So, so then in which case we, we put what is called as a break statement. Break, what the break will do is we come out of the loop completely. So if you see a negative number in the input, then what we say is, uh, you know what, so this is not acceptable. Error in the input uh, series, there is a negative number. Otherwise, you print that number. All right, so let's compile this program. So if there are two nested loops, uh, the closest nested, the closest, the innermost loop will be considered.
right let's step back so there is an error what's the error line 22 ah there should be an lc See, when I say minus, then it says uh, error in the input series and there is a negative number. Yeah, see, it is possible for me to mute everyone and make uh, selectively whoever raises hands to unmute, but it is a lot of effort for me to look in a series of 120 students and you know, unmute it. Maybe I will do that. Okay, I think maybe I'll do that. Sir, couldn't we just put um, the whole thing in the if statement? Like, suppose if we had to stop the loop in an end. Who is asking this question? So. Searching my... Sir, so if could we could just put um, for the input less than zero, we could just put the printf statement inside and break the loop. That would just cut off the rest of 16, 17, 18. You wouldn't have to add. No, but then uh, you end up printing a sum of positive numbers in it, right? We want to say, I don't even want to permit negative numbers in the list. So I still have to check on line. Uh, after I come out of the loop, whether we have seen a positive number or a negative number. Or... Okay, I am following your advice, guys. So I unmuted, muted everyone, and whoever raises hands, I will unmute. Sir? Yes. Sir, can, can you try putting a negative number in between? Um, as an input in the, so as soon as if you see on line 10 as soon as we see minus one or whatever negative number you come out of it so so but is the control transferring to that if statement because uh, the control is in while statement i guess no no see when it when the scanner reads that negative number control will go to line 10 and uh, we come out of the loop Okay. I, I, did I answer your question? See, it depends on how you give the input. Uh, so if you see, you know, maybe like for example, uh, 32, 12, minus one. So when we press minus one, it is still not supplied to the program now. But if I press enter now, 32, 12, minus one, 43, the program, if you go back to the program, so 32 will be consumed on line eight, you go to the loop, and then um, uh, 12 will be consumed, and then again you go inside the loop, and again minus one will be consumed, and then uh, what happens is, uh, once minus one is consumed, the control will go to line 11 and you come out of the loop, and what happens is the 43 that is there after minus one, it will not be consumed at all. It will be just left in the keyboard buffer. Okay, so that's what happens. Yes, Rajeshi, you have a question? No, sir. Uh, so I had raised my hand earlier. I forgot to put okay. it down. Okay. No Sorry, sir. Yeah, no problem. If you input something like 13, 12, minus 1, 10 from a text file and use GDB to find the sum when it is executed, will it be uh, 25 because of the break statement? 
it will not be 25 projects. I mean, it is, uh, yeah, if you go and look, examine the sum variable, it will be 25. In GDB, if you go examine, so after you come out of the loop, you, and if you examine the sum variable, it will be 25. That's true. Karthik has a question. Yes, Karthi, go ahead. Oh, sorry, sir. A break ends uh, loops, right? It doesn't end, uh, end if statements. No, you, break doesn't have any semantics with respect to if directly. Okay. It goes and finds the enclosing, the closest innermost uh, loop it finds, and it we break from that loop. Okay, sir. So if I use break in a if, what will happen? No, no, that's uh, nothing happens. If you don't. Uh, break what is the semantics of the break like for example if you see the code here break stands for itself so on line 11 there is break so as soon as you enter the loop uh, within the first iteration itself you break and you come out of the loop what break does is it finds the closest end closing loop and from that we come out that's what it does does it make sense karthik there is nothing like exiting an if statement. We exit the loop. It exits the loop. Yeah, so Kishore is, has put it better than me that the break is useful only in switch statements and in loops. So when we have this if statement, so break, what break does is it goes to, that is the next example. So what break does is it tries to find out an enclosing loop or a switch statement and it comes out of that. With respect to if break doesn't have any semantics. So now let's look at the next program. This is what uh, is here. If you see this program, this is a kind of a dummy code. So where we, this is an infinite while loop where we keep reading uh, numbers. So you read 0, 1. It, if it is 0, it says, uh, you know, in the switch statement, uh, using switch statement, we say we, it is a 0. If it is 1, if it says it is a 1. But if it is anything, any number other than uh, uh, 0 or 1, then we go to the default state this case on line 18, and there is a break. And what this break does is, this break uh, it comes out of the switch statement and it we don't break out from the while loop. We don't break out from the while loop. So GCC. Switch while dot C. Like for example, 0, 1, 0, 1. So this is a kind of a boring program. So if it is minus 1, so then what happens is it goes to the default and there is a break, but this break finds the enclosing switch or a loop and it finds an enclosing switch and break in that switch doesn't mean anything. You just come out of that switch. Okay, so again, you go back to the loop. So if there is no break, it doesn't make any difference. If there is no break in the default, it doesn't make any difference. There is no difference. Actually, in this particular case, having a break there, it's not a big deal at all. But uh, let's say the default case is coming here as the first case, then a break has a meaning. So if you see, in this case, break is important. So, but the program semantics is not going to change. See, the interesting thing right now is I press it control D to terminate uh, and uh, end of file character is supplied and scanf is not able to read that end of file character so it is returning and uh, yeah something weird is happening here so let me use control c to terminate the program and come back so yeah so can you can someone tell me what is happening here uh, switch yeah it's okay I think let's uh, continue. So the purpose of this uh, code, yeah, the purpose of uh, 
Yeah. So the purpose of this code is uh, this. The purpose of this code is I want you to understand that when you put a break statement in a switch, you don't break from the enclosing uh, the while statement or a for, for statement which is enclosing that uh, switch. Are you with me on this particular example? So, so you have to be careful. You have to be careful uh, in this that uh, uh, that the break uh, in a switch it breaks from the switch, but it doesn't break from the enclosing uh, the while loop or a file loop or a for loop which encloses that switch state. So how do we come out of this uh, while loop? Uh, so you can use what is called as a go to statement. So I will say go to L1 and I have something like uh, L1 is equal to this. So go to L1 means go to a statement whose label is uh, L1. So on line 22, we have uh, L1. So let's compile and see what happens. GCC switch while dot C dot A dot out zero one one let's say two. So now I am out. So one thing uh, I want you to yeah. So are you with me on the go to statement? Do you understand what is happening? When we hit the go to statement, control is transferring to a statement label 22. And uh, so actually the semicolon is required because if the semicolon is not there, the compiler is giving an error label at the end of a compound statement. So if you put a semicolon, it is like what they call as a null statement. Null statement is an empty statement. So you're going to uh, uh, statement uh, at line 22. We can do anything here, like for example, here, printf out of while. Assignment statements cause a server. So no, Kishore, I don't think it's the case. So let's say n is equal to 12. Let's see. Here, this is, uh, yeah, one more thing. So here, one, uh, so now you can see on the terminal, uh, you can see that there is a problem here. Let's compile this code and see what happens. So when we compile this code, it is saying that the variable n is not declared. The reason is the variable n is declared within the block statement associated with while. So its scope is restricted to line seven to line uh, 19. So in order for us to be able to use uh, uh, n outside while, you have to declare it here. So there is no error, it's not a problem. So you come out of it. So there is no problem to have an assignment statement even on line 23 with that label. So not an issue at all. The clang, it's a problem. So we will discuss this Kishore later. Show it, showed it to me. Are you all with me here? Karthik. Uh, so can you tell, uh, repeat what you said about the null statement that is required at the end of the block? I'm not, I wasn't able to understand very well. Null statement is nothing but no statement. If you just have, uh, you know, uh, empty thing, just semicolon, it is what is called as a null statement. 
apparently if you don't have a null statement then uh, associated with label label should be associated with some statement here l1 is a label it should be associated with some statement it can be an empty statement it cannot be no statement it can be a null statement and that's what it is okay sir but also i've heard many people say that using go to is like uh, bad coding should try try to avoid that yeah yeah so go to is generally considered as a bad coding practice because the control flow gets co complex and uh, uh, they, you tend to make errors so readability problems as project said so are you all with me here so far can i go ahead okay i have some one awesome program today which i want to really wanted to show but uh, we are running out of time let's see uh, so there is on there is this simple sum program which computes the sum of uh, squares of uh, first n numbers using this and what i want you to not squares actually sum of first n numbers the particular thing i want you to note here is what is called as an assert statement so when you are writing your program you can use these assert statements in your programs to see that the logic is kind of holding up certain invariance that you are expecting in your program uh, when the program reaches certain program points whether they are holding up or not you can check by using these assert statements these assert statements are really useful uh, so for example here we are checking at the end of this loop whether the sum is equal to first of uh, sum of first n natural numbers we know the sum of first n natural numbers is n into n plus 1 by 2 so you can see so gcc sum n dot c and uh, yeah so n is 5 so the sum of first n natural numbers is 15 so this assert statement is satisfied so there is no problem but on the contrary if i use the i star i uh, then you know then obviously it's not we are there is a logic error here on line 12 so the assert statement will fail and uh, you can see uh, there is an assertion error you get so you can see that there is an assertion error i want you to pay attention to this and see when you write your programs in order to make your program robust at different points in your program you can uh, write assertions uh, to see that uh, your program is uh, doing all right like for example you can kind of have an assert statement to say you are interested in finding only you know uh, that we are expecting only positive numbers like for example n greater than zero you can have an assertion here so so what happens is so here uh, like again let's compile this code uh, so if i give a negative number as input then uh, no the assertion on line 11 is failed and uh, you come out of the program so you can kind of when you are writing your program in order to make your program rob robust you can use asset statements here and there to see that everything is in uh, place so if assert fails you come out of the loop yes not loop you come out of the program What do you mean by can you give even numbers by input? Anirudh, what is your question? Can you try n as even numbers? So why not? Yeah, so here the assertion failed because I'm using I star I, but otherwise, uh, yeah. no problem. Mm. 
great so now let's look at this uh, using just using go to statement so why is asset statement useful so asset statement is useful because uh, while writing programs you should sparse your program you no know, put asset statements at different place to see that everything is in uh, is uh, all right like for example you can see log where is this uh, yesterday we were writing uh, log dot c so here in this log dot c we can maybe put something like uh, we want to assert that uh, you know base so base power log is equal to i so you can kind of put an asset this kind of doesn't work because this is uh, not a power thing uh, so but if you kind of uh, write an asset statement here so that every time you enter the loop you know that there is a certain loop invariant that has to hold and uh, if that loop invariant doesn't hold then that means something wrong with your program and you kind of uh, get an assertion error So let's look at uh, this go to program. So this is a program using go to to print the tables. Please pay attention here. So on line number nineteen we have i is equal to one, and uh, on line number twenty one we are checking if i less than or equal to ten. If uh, not of that, so if i is greater than, uh, uh, so if this condition is true. then that means i is greater than 10 in which case we go to uh, statement uh, label 26 otherwise we print uh, the current line number in the table we increment i and then we go back to the statement label i or you all with me on this program this is the program that we have seen cup uh, yesterday and uh, so this go to program so let's compile this program so finally all your for loops while loops they will be internally mapped to something like this using just go to so gcc print table dot go to so the table gets printed or you with me on this code this go to statement go to just does a control transfer go to just does a control transfer is there anyone who is lost by this time just want to check because today we are kind of doing a marathon session Harshit Gupta is lost. Tell me, Harshit. So, Rajeshi has a question. Yes, Rajeshi. Please go ahead. So, can you please repeat the go to bit again? This one. No? Explain. Yes. Sir. Yeah. Okay. so what happens here is very simple so let me explain so today we are having a long session i think i'll just take still a little bit more time because there is a super program which i am excited about to show <laughs> so uh, yeah on line 19 if you see uh, you, you can see this program so you read the input on line 9 into variable n and uh, actually this is this program is best done using uh, you know go to statement using gdb let's use gdb and see what happens here okay so let's use gdb 
and in order to make uh, it slightly more easier for you to see what is happening i am going to do one thing i will just run terminal gdb from that term from within uh, visual studio code okay so that you can see what is happening above so gcc print uh, table go to gdb so i have to use minus g option gdb a dot out so you run the program and it is asking enter the table you would like to print uh, so let's say five huh what happened so i didn't put a breakpoint yeah so i didn't put a breakpoint that's the problem so I put a breakpoint on main and then say run and then say next so on line 7 print of statement is there it is printed it has to be printed but yeah it will come out now and then there is a scan of statement and the scan of statement let's say i give 5 so now pay attention so now we are on line 19 so line 19 when it gets executed next so i is equal to 1 so is i less than 1? So i less than 1 is less than. So if you see what is happening here is i is equal to 1. So i is equal to 1, 1 less than or equal to 10. Uh, this is false. But negation of this is true because we are applying the negation. Sorry, this is uh, not. Uh, So when we apply it becomes true. So the whole condition here is true. Uh, is, is it true or false? Reverse. Huh? I is less than 2. Yeah, I am doing the opposite. Yeah, sorry, guys. I am doing the opposite. So thank you. So this I less than or equal to 10. This is true. 1 is uh, less than 10. This is true. And the negation of it is uh, false. Uh, so because of that, the control doesn't uh, go to line 22 because control goes there only if for that condition, if that uh, expression turns out to be Boolean expression turns out to be true. So now uh, when you do next, what happens is control will go to line 23. Control will go to line 23. And then on line 23, we print and uh, so 5 times 1 is equal to 5 got printed here. And, uh, and then i is equal to i plus 1. And then there is an unconditional go to statement. All go to statements are unconditional. You go to statement labeled L1. So next. So now we have come back here to statement 21. That's all. And then on statement 21, the current value of i is, uh, you can see, print uh, i less than or equal to 10. So this is true. And print uh, negation of i less than or equal to 10, it is false. Because of that, line 22 cannot uh, execute. So it should go to 23. OK. And on line 23, you print. And then 24, you i is equal to i plus 1. 25, um, go to L1. So finally, what happens is when i is equal to 11, uh, so you go to statement uh, on line 22, and you come out of that term. All right. Are you all with me here? So I have a good feedback. If i is greater than 10, then you go to statement 2. Is it all right now? The code looks with, uh, with without negation. If i greater than 10, then go to statement labeled uh, 20. Awesome. So you all know about go to, so it's fantastic. And uh, last couple of problems here for you. 
these are on arrays. So finally, we got here on arrays, but I'm skeptical about going further because some of you may be lost if I continue. Um, let's see. I think we should stop here, okay? So let's stop here. Uh, there are a couple of interesting problems on arrays. We will take up arrays uh, with a fresh mind. Uh, but whatever that is being discussed so far in today's lecture, uh, we will uh, take it up uh, in the next class. No, it's not like a very super problem. <laughs> uh, Project sheets. Uh, we, we just compute the histogram of various characters occurring in English language text and it, uh, it's kind of a fun program to see. Okay, I think we should stop here. And uh, uh, yeah, so I wanted to cover some base so that you can uh, do your uh, homework problems successfully. <laughs>